Well, hey there, good morning everyone. Kay here on my homestead. Welcome to my channel if you're new here. I live on about nine plus 1.8 acres. Most of, well, I'd say five eighths of which is forested. The rest of it, I've over time, over the two years I've been here, I have been turning into gardens. I have more than I can handle, more than I can take care of, but you know, I have like big visions of I love gardening. What can I say? So I'm doing the very best that I can to turn this into a beautiful showcase with a lot of different kinds of plants and a lot of different kinds of planting areas from no-till to tilling. So I've got everything in between. Well, I want to catch you up on a few of the things that's been going on. And if you've been following my new shorts, uh, videos that I've been uploading. They're only about a minute long. They're, I only use one clip. I don't know how to edit those. So I'm just doing my best to keep you updated. Uh, I think that's my cat back there. Yeah, that's Tiger back there. Um, and this is, uh, this is BJ. These are, if you, know, if you don't know my cats, I have a litter of four. And in their case, you know, the two's company, three's a crowd. You've heard that your whole life. Well, in this case, three's company and four is a crowd. And this is what I've learned over the two years that I've had them. And so Patch, who used to run away because they were beating up on her, bullying her, whatever, she's very small. I've been keeping her in the house. So if any of you have been wondering about Patch, She's fine, she's in the house, and she gets a lot of love from me, so no worries there. These guys are the hunters and they're outside. So they're all in during the night though, and so they can't help me with raccoons, although I don't want my cats going up against a raccoon anyway. They, they can be vicious. <laughs> so. What I want to do is just catch you up on a lot that's been going on, just bits and pieces. There's just no way for me to cover it all. But the raccoon situation in the corn is what we're going to go investigate first. We're going to go take a look and see about the damage last night. The night before that, I took out a five gallon bucket full of corn, which I put in the freezer. I shucked and put in straight into the freezer on cobs yesterday morning. Last night, I took out two more five-gallon containers. I just took everything out that w might be usable, not necessarily what I would have picked that day if I'd had my choice, but I knew, you know, once raccoons get a taste of it, it's like candy and they're going to be back. I went to Walmart yesterday and I bought two radios. One of them was a charger, you know, USB, so I charged that overnight. I didn't get to use it, but I popped batteries in the other little radio and I set it up. The only station I could find was playing jazz. <laughs> they probably said, hey, nice music as we eat your corn. But I also set up two motion lights shooting down two of the rows, hoping that that might scare them away. Well, let me just say that no sooner had I gotten up here, I, I got in about dark and, you know, I looked down there through the window and the motion lights were on and they stayed on continuously until I went to bed. And then at 4.35 this morning, they were on again. So I know what to expect when we get down there, but we'll go and see. I also want to show you my new area the last minute addition to my garden, I haven't talked about it all. I decided to try to use some of these wonderful, unusual pumpkin seeds, pumpkin and winter squash seeds that I was given in 2017 from a man that I met at the National Heirloom Expo. And I thought, Kay, if you don't use these now, when are you going to use these? So. <laughs> Randy, I had Randy literally use the auger six feet apart and put a grid over on my side garden that I had forest mulched. It's terrible soil and uh, it, full of weeds. I've been having it mowed and I thought, okay, if I can 
my mower's coming today, so he's going to move the hay bale over there. The, so the plan is I'm going to weed whack around every one of those. Well, there were 24. I think probably only maybe 20 I have left that made it. Um, we've had such tremendous heat. And so I'm going to weed whack around that. He's going to mow in between because, like I said, there's six feet between rows and he can get in at least six feet and he can get in with the mower and then I'm going to roll out hay like a blanket all around it and let the vines grow out over that. So that's number one this morning and then we're going to check on some other things so stay tuned. <laughs> you know I've been doing these medicinal plant videos and you can't cover all the things you can do with some of these plants in one video so I wanted to do another video on mullen because mullen has been been blooming and I, I, I think I might have missed the, the peak of the bloom, although the flowers come at different times. So it's like, it's hard to get a lot of flowers at once, at least around here. But I have new friends that live within two miles from here. I'm so excited to be able to show you their place pretty soon. She's very interested in, they've only been here for a year, and, and she's very interested in building a natural, uh, you know, native seeds, a native seed garden. She has a lot of mullen because when they developed their place, they disrupted the whole hillside. And so there's just mullen coming up everywhere. But there's each spike, each flower spike just has a flower here and there. It would just take literally hours to go around and just take them off. So she cut me a bunch of flower spikes because she's got plenty more plants. I've got those in water and I did get about a half of a pint jar of flowers and I have put sugar into that. I'm making cough syrup. Now it takes about three weeks to make that so you'll be hearing about that as it develops. Also about the wild lettuce. I'm getting a lot of views on my wild lettuce tincture video. If you haven't seen that I'll put the link right up there and check that out that is, you know, historically been known for pain relief, the sap inside the wild lettuce. So I had that same plant I, I had in the video, grew up six feet tall. This is after it had been eaten down by deer twice. It continued to grow. I put net, um, fencing around it and it continued to grow and then it put up flower spikes that are another foot. And they just, it seemed like they bloomed for about a minute, about a day, and then they went to little puffballs like dandelion puffballs. So, and now the plant is covered in powdery mildew. Take a look. Hey, if you saw my wild lettuce tincture video, this is the same plant. Uh, between six and seven feet tall now with these flower blossoms. It's going to seed. I kind of missed it and now it looks like it's covered in powdery mildew. We've had so much humidity. I'm not surprised. So I think I can probably still get the sap from the plant, trim it back, and then I'm going to see if it, it grows some more. It's uh, you're, you're probably going to find your prickly lettuce in, in your area somewhere and then the older plants are supposed to have uh-oh there is a cat back there and my cats haven't seen it that's like this neighbor cat that just roams hey kitty come here come here come here can't believe this. Uh-huh. Yeah, it took off. Yeah. Where are my cats when I need them? Oh well. So I still hope, I'm still hoping to get the sap out of that plant, cut it back and see if it grows back. And the older plants are supposed to have more potent sap. Potent pain-killing sap. <laughs> so that's something I'm working on. 
Also, I have a purslane video that I want to do, so you have that to look forward to. So lot, lots of medicinal plant videos. A lot of people have been requesting it, and I just have to get the time to do it all. So let's go over and check out, let's ch first check out the flower corn because that's where the raccoons struck first. So I've got these flower spikes in water and I'm hoping they continue to open. I've got bees on here. Wow. That's a bee with a lot of pollen on its legs and sweat bees. So that's very interesting. But, you know, each day I'm just going to take more flowers off and add it to my cough syrup mixture. Just a quick update back on the deck. All of this is tall purslane. I actually bought it, the seeds, at the National Heirloom Expo. So it grows up straight in bigger stalks than what you find down in the garden. And um, I'll be using this for the video, but I wanted to show you. This is my newest, edi this is my newest addition to my citrus family. And this is a Meyer lemon. And it was in a smaller pot, and I didn't even realize, but it it blew off this uh, this stand of wood back here. I had it sitting over here, and it blew off, and I didn't even miss it. And I found it over on its side, and it was a tippy pot, and so I put it in a more substantial pot and repotted it. So I'm I'm hoping for good things. It's it is actually got a couple of blooms on it. I have not had a lemon since I've been here, so we'll see. Okay, so this is my small stand of Wapsi corn that my friend Mark has been developing for at least 10 years. It's a flower corn. Its purpose is to be dried on the stalk and to be ground as flour or cornmeal. Unfortunately, we had all of those winds several storms in a row and a lot of it blew down four times a total of four times and i was out here scrambling putting up string everybody says don't pick it up don't pick it up but it was it was already shoulder high and i just figured if i didn't pick it up it was finished so i picked it up i you can see the string along through there you can see there's quite a few that are actually standing and Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's there's a few that are down, and the cobs have been eaten. So I'll I'll show you. Um, this garden has not had any maintenance. My bad. After that, those winds, I picked up. There were some of the peppers that were down. Uh, some didn't make it, but I did a little reinforcement after that. But I. I haven't weeded and now the weeds are terrible and <laughs> see there's a missing pepper plant here I have plenty of peppers I don't have to worry you know I have good peppers but what I didn't plant and didn't expect was Kushaw squash growing out Kushaw makes huge vines and leaves and it just takes over there's red clover growing up and then there's the infamous sunflower and and that <laughs> that creature <laughs> good heavens <coughs> I'm coughing still because the air has been so bad we've had this you know chemical haze in the air uh, I wonder if I could even I hate even stepping in here oh look that's a butternut squash. They start out light with light green stripes. I did have another one over here. Let's see. Somewhere. It was a big one. Oh, wow. I haven't sprayed for bugs or anything here, but the squash bugs have returned to the lower garden. I had to spray yesterday. Well, I don't see that. It. I had a big squash. Oh, wait. Wait, wait. Oh, oh, maybe I'm looking too close here. 
here's one. See, this is what, this is a butternut. This is what they look like after they start maturing, see? Isn't that gorgeous? But I thought I had a big one laying on the ground. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my goodness. <laughs> look, twins outside the fence. They just, this is literally an inch, but they'll just, you know, when they first start putting that vine out, they'll go, they'll go right through that. And they, they sense that there's space on the other side of the fence, I guess. And then I've got a, a kusha hanging off this fence over here. Isn't that pretty? Kusha tends, the, the leaves tend to go yellow quicker than any of the other winter squashes. Oh, look. Oh, I'm gonna have lots of butternut. Isn't that nice? Uh, but I know that there's, oh my goodness. All right, let's go around. I wanna show you this huge kusha. Well, while we're here, let's just look at the poor Wapsie. I mean, the wind just, I never got the string, I didn't get to string this up. I just laid these against it and it fell over. But, well, hi. It's too bad you weren't here in here at night so you could keep the raccoons out. Hi, tiger. Hi. Hi, baby. Hi. You smell the raccoons? Do you smell the raccoons? Hmm? Yeah. See? See, they've been in here. Pairing everything up. You know, I was just thinking, oh, it's a flower corn. It's standing upright. I can worry about so many other things. I don't have to worry about it. Uh, but yeah, the raccoons are going to go, hey, you can eat it early. The ears are quite small. Oh, dear. Oh, I wanted to show you this. Okay. Check out this monster. That's a southern heirloom kusha. They're not as heavy as some others, but uh, they get big. It's just incredible. I, I had no idea any of that would happen. And all of these tomatoes are volunteer. One, two, three, four, five. I, I don't know what I'll get. See, this whole area was just supposed to be peppers. And now it's, look at all the weeds. See, I should have, if I had just put hay in here, see, before everything grew up. But I didn't, you know. Let's just check out the beans real quick. Nothing came up in here. I don't know what happened there. This is red calico. And the other day when I was in here, I could just see all of these ants. And they had, they each had a, a nymph. And they were, there they are, there they are. Oh yeah, see? This is the rattlesnake pole bean. They make the prettiest little purple flowers, if you call that purple. So pretty. These seeds are all from Daryl, my friend Daryl. This is the mustard, and that's the black mustard seed is very medicinal, has a lot of benefits. These are the potatoes coming up. They look a little washed out. The green looks a little washed out to me. I don't know. And then I do have some, some melon, some watermelons. Oops. 
This one looks rotten. I don't think that's gonna, no, that's not gonna, that's not gonna make it. There's a nice one, there's a nice one. There's some darker green ones. Ooh, this, that's a nice one over here. Wherever there's hay, there's potatoes, so I have to be careful where I step. That's a nice one, that one. And these, these sort of bluish green ones. Oh, this sort of has a rotten end also. Is it just all that w rain or what? Oh no. Ugh, look at that. Let's get that off. Well, you know, at this point I get what I get. Thank you, tiger. You know, I don't know if I'm gonna have any corns left. Look, I wonder if I went down the rows and analyzed would there be any cobs left. All that work, you have no idea. I just killed myself coming out here with, with storms, trying to save it. And then it manages to correct by standing up straight and then the raccoons. It's very easy for raccoons to get in here because I never reinforce this door and the netting is broken at the bottom. That's how the cats go in and out. But I mean, it would be no problem for the raccoons to climb over that netting. Let's see you come out through the door. Come on, let's go. We're going down. Come on. Come on. Show them how you go through the door. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. See how? <laughs> it's just remarkable that these are still alive. These are two rows of Sharon that my friend Angie in Kentucky sent me. And as soon as I planted them here, I thought it would be so pretty, you know, because my house is over there. And I thought it would be so pretty to look out and see these things blooming here. But the deer ate them down to the ground almost immediately. And so they have struggled. They've been eaten on and eaten on. And then this one has a huge fire ant hill at the mound. And I have treated it over and over and over, but I haven't gotten anything. This is the one that I'm aware of. I only have one common native milkweed here. And it is surrounded, all these light green leaves are poison ivy. And the reason they're light green is because he weed whacked all this and they're, they've come back. And plus I sprayed it with vinegar and they came back because that's what they do. That's my cistern and we're not even going to talk about that today. Oh look, let's see what's blooming over here. I planted so many wildflower seeds over here. I'm going to have to check that. Those are so pretty. Look at that. Wow. Okay, I looked this up and it's called moth mullen. It spreads rapidly and it's considered an invasive weed. At some point it'll have to get mowed, I guess. So I have three pecan trees that I planted the first year. They really struggled and I didn't even think they made it from year one, from 21 to 22. But they did, and I just had little chicken wire enclosures around them. Well, that those got replaced a couple of months ago by these uh, bigger fencing. And now, you know, they look like they want more space. Let me see what this is. I think that this is ragweed. And if it is, that's got to go, because ragweed is one of the most, um, yeah, common ragweed. Oh, oh dear. You know what? This, we put down this uh, five inches off the ground, but the fire ants have built a mound up so that the fencing is below 
I was just going to reach in there and grab it. That would not be a good idea. But that's got to go. This is the new pumpkin field, if you want to call it that. And when I planted it, some of the more delicate ones I put shade cloth on. So the shade cloth is going to come up. They're going to get weed whacked around each one. It's going to get mowed, and then I'm going to take the white protective covers off and spray them for bugs. Let's see what this is. This looks pretty. Oh, that's a poppy. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, pretty little poppy. Right beside the blue stuff. I have to check out, see what that blue stuff is. He left this, he didn't mow this because I got a, a stand of first year mullein here. And this is probably Queen Anne's lace or wild carrot. It's really hard to tell the difference. They're both in the same family. Wild carrot is actually one of the most toxic. This is the only one I didn't have the white. Oh, cutworm. Cutworm just cut that off, so that one's empty. <sighs> we'll see. Out of the 25 I planted, it'll be interesting to see if I have a dozen left. Hey, are you on top of one of these things? Careful. Careful. That one looks like it might make it. Yeah. Yeah, that one's empty. This one looks good. This one is chomping at the bits to get out of there. But I just want to get this mowing, you know, and all that done. See, what, what I did was I had four seeds in a two-and-a-half by two-and-a-half seed cup, right? And squash does not like to be transplanted. They like to be planted where you're gonna... That one looks like a cutworm got to it, too. Yeah, that's no longer engaged, so that's out. So, what happened is, in the cups, I had to separate them and plant them out, and I put the first strongest one on this first row here. And then the smaller and more fragile ones <laughs> as I went across, so. That's why you see everyone in this first row, except that, is doing well. Look at this one. Yeah, I can't wait to get this under control. That's my main goal this morning. There's nothing in there. And something in there. Gosh, I think maybe I'll be lucky to have 12 good ones. Uh, we're going to the lower garden, which is here. This is my 5,000 square foot garden where I have it electrified and I even have, you know, little LED lights that drape around the very top. There's always more you can do, but I think raccoons are pretty impossible. Let's go over and see the damage. Hey, Tiger, you want to go with me? Come on. I, I'm walking up and I'm going, what, where's that music coming from? You know, I don't usually hear music down here, but that's the music from the radio. It's now country. It was jazz when I went to bed, and I don't want to get into a musical copyright situation, so let's go turn it off and then I'll continue. Okay, well that was unfortunate. I, uh, I always get down here and turn off the fence before the cats are this far down. But you saw a Tiger was ahead of me and I was talking to you and talking about the radio and she went under the wire and she got shocked by the electric fence. Uh, to my knowledge, that's the first time of course, I don't know, but anyway, she took off and went that way. I called my neighbor, 
she's on her way to South Carolina, but her husband, who did my roof, he was literally driving by, going to work, and he said he didn't see her. And so I've been calling and calling. So say a little prayer that Tiger's okay, and I'll be sure and, and let you know. Um, and that she comes back, you know, doesn't get run over or something uh, by freaking out. She 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 did run this way, and, and she didn't run like run straight across the road. So. It was my other neighbor. He just texted me and asked me if I, if he could have the uh, corn stalks for his cows. Like I, I, I did that the last two years. So, all right, I'm gonna go turn off the radio and we're gonna look at the corn. Okay. 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 Let's see. You know what I should have done last night is pick up all the ones that were already down so I could tell the difference. But it was really late and I didn't do that. But you know, I just assumed that they were they were all in here, but, uh, you know, oh my goodness, look at that one. Where's my hair? Look at that one. That looks, looks good. Well, what I'll do is I'll come and harvest more tonight. You know, it would be nice to be able to just eat it fresh as you go, but, I mean, I don't think there were that many down last night, but they left a few, so. This was all pretty much down last night, so. Yeah, maybe, maybe it helped. I don't know. You know, the fact that I still have corns developing is a positive sign. Tiger! Okay, I, uh... Man, I hate to end this on a... <sighs> such a note, because I was, um... I'm actually pleased that they didn't finish off the corn, although they want it when it's in perfect ripeness also. So I'm sure they're going to be back because there was no wind last night and the motion light was on when I went to bed and when I got up at 4.30 it was on. So I feel, and it was shooting right down the road, so I just feel like it had to be raccoons in there. So they'll be back. And now all I have to worry about is tiger. So, gosh, that's been my fear. The whole time you try to protect your crops and... My fault. My neighbor said that he thinks she'll be okay, but she hadn't come back. There's no telling how far she would run if she was scared, you know? get in the car and go down the road but she runs from cars so she's not gonna that's not gonna help maybe I'll just walk down again hey, I just wanted to give you an update tiger is okay I walked all the way down calling and calling and calling and I just said well I'll never find her it's all woods in there and uh, ticks and triggers and probably snakes so I just said you know uh, 
if I'm on the street and I'm calling her out to the street, I don't want her coming to the street. So I don't ever want to go into the street, so the road. So anyway, I came back, I started uh, working and um, pretty soon I see her. She came through this way and she came up. So she is fine and I petted her. She was purring, was dirty. Uh, but since we have all this commotion today, I just thought, you know, I'm putting her inside so she can totally just stay cool and re recuperate. So all is well. I didn't want to leave you, leave you hanging. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe. Click that button for notifications. Scroll down and click all so you won't miss anything right here. Don't forget to share this channel and help spread the love and spread the inspiration that amidst all of the challenges, I mean, we all have challenges in life in general, right? Not just uh, trying to grow your own food and farming. So go for it. You wanna be able to have your own food when the grid goes down. Not if, when. Well, what have we here?